Susan and Lloyd Rudolph, two professors from the University of Chicago, are one of those rarest of rare instances where two non-Indians were awarded the Padma Bhushan this January. This unusual gesture is because they are more Indian than many Indians and they know India better than any Indian political scientist. Their first book, Modernity of Tradition, in 1956, documented the rise of two castes in Tamil Nadu, the Nadars and the Vanniyars, and proved that castes, instead of dying in the face of democracy, will become vehicles of democracy. Since that book in 1956, the duo have written six more books, Pursuit of Lakshmi, an essay in Indian political economy, two books on Gandhiji, two on Rajasthan, and over a hundred articles and papers. To Lloyd Rudolph goes the distinction of having forecast a UPA victory in 2004 when every expert predict an NDA victory. What does Lloyd Rudolph think of the upcoming election? Let's find out. Professor Susan and Lloyd Rudolph, thank you very much for joining us. Well, uh, the, that's the first question to you. Uh, Professor Rudolph, uh, how do you see the upcoming elections? Who do you think has the best chance? What's your gut telling you? Well, the, I think the big thing to think about in the next election is which party will be the single largest party that the president, by ordinary rules of the game, the president has to ask the single largest party to form a government. Now, I think the chances are that it's going to be the, be the BJP, but he will, the BJP will have to form a coalition government. Mm -hmm. And there's where the rub comes. I mean, uh, the talk about Narendra Modi being the prime minister seems have to be uh, modified by the fact that who will join the BJP in uh, a coalition government. And you all you remember way back when the BJP first time Vajpayee trying to form a government, no one would come to the BJP and they had to <laughs> yeah, give but, it up. Uh, yeah. there, there are some uh, uh, sophologists, mm. or well, not really sophologists, some yeah. election surveys yeah. which uh, believe that the BJP may get uh, 210 to 120 seats on its own, in which case the bridge to Two, becoming 50. the majority is much less, yeah. maybe 50, 55 seats. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, the BJP under Mr. Narendra Modi can? Uh, get that kind of a majority, 210 to 20 seats? Well, you know, <laughs> I find it very difficult to say. I mean, I know there are already some uh, uh, some polls out, but, uh, I, e e well, even 50 seats, the question is, where are these 50 seats coming from? Regional parties certainly will be part of it. You remember that the... Um, Vajpayee had to accommodate to uh, to um, uh, um, the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Uh, yes, and he had to give up the three planks of the BJP's platform, mm -hmm. Kashmir and the temple, and uh, modifying the civil code, and so forth. So. Uh, it may be that the it may be 50 seats, but it, it may be more or less. But then not only it can be maybe more. So the question is, what kind of uh, concessions will they have to make to form a government? And then the question is, will that regional party accept um, Narendra Modi as a, a prime minister? So, do you is your assessment that uh, there is a very good chance? that uh, uh, the BJP will have to work with uh, a lot of uh, third parties or do you think that it might be a third front that will be backed by either the Congress or the BJP? Third front, well there isn't really much of a third front yet is there? No. No, so I don't think we should get too deep into third front. It's, you know there's some hopes but not much concrete m m action and, uh, uh, and then there's the question is, there's the pre-election and the post-election coalitions, and that will affect the outcome of the election, whether, uh, whether people are committed before or afterwards. Afterwards, there's a lot of bargaining. Before, you have to be committed to something like the 
B, to call that, to make a coalition with the BJP, you have to have uh, you have to uh, agree with a lot of what the BJP has to say, and um, so your sense is the best, uh, like the most likely uh, outcome. How would it look like? You think uh, BJP with a lot more coalition parties is that your uh, what you would place a bet on? Well, I think the BJP. Let me. Uh, would have the single would be the single largest party. I think the president will have to ask the BJP to form a government. That'll be pretty. Mr. Pranab Mukherjee being a president, he, I think the Arvind Kadaraman make it clear that, and it was supported by further practice and so forth that that is a rule that should be followed. It's be very hard not to follow that rule. So. It has to be that they will be asked to form the government. So a lot depends, on, as you say, is it 40, 50 seats or a bit more than that? And the, which, so which regional parties are we talking about? I mean, we, you know, are we getting into, uh, we don't know what's going to happen in Tamil Nadu. We don't know what's going to happen in Andhra Pradesh. Previous elections, Andhra Pradesh was very decisive for the Congress and they, they, created Telangana to get some more seats, maybe they will. You therefore don't think that uh, the chances of a non-BJP government exist at all? Oh, I wouldn't say there's going to be a BJP government. I was going to say there's going to be a coalition government, which BJP is, a, of course, the single largest party. And the question uh, is, who will ally with them under what conditions? And will it be possible for Narendra Modi to be prime minister, or will he conditions of the coalition be such that he may not be the conditions of the coalition be that somebody else will have to serve as prime minister so therefore you no, I, I just wanted to know where you would put, place your bet would at the moment does it look like the bets are that it would be a, a, a non modi led government or bjp government or a modi led bjp government where would you place your bets i would place my bets on a non-Modi-led government, with, uh, but it depends a lot on how badly, how, how, how badly the Congress does, in a way. That means how many, uh, how strong the uh, BJP's bargaining position is, and what, what kind of, as you raised at the beginning of this interview, how many seats they need, and from whom they need those seats. Fair enough. So I'm, I, I know I'm <laughs> evading your yes. question, but uh, you know we're talking. We're talking a um, great deal of uncertainty at yes. the moment. And then the uncertainty. So the is chances of another election, like we saw in 97, yes. uh, following yes. quickly a midterm poll, looks fairly bright for you? Well, you mean that this is going to be something like a hung parliament? Yes. Is that No, I don't like think it will be a hung. Well, since 1989, there, there, no one has won a majority to form a government, a majority government. Since 19, that's the 10th general election. And I don't think there's going to be any change from that. That is to say, we're now the 15th. Yeah. And uh, the, oh, so what I am saying, or what we are saying, I think, is that chances of the BJP winning a clear majority, I think are very slim, very slim. Oh, now the question is, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Modi, however, is making every I mean he's got the problem of the Muslim vote mm. and and he's got the problem of being pictured by the Congress and others as an extremist mm. he's working very hard to remove that idea by talking about why Gandhi mm. was such a wonderful leader mm. he, I even mentioned Nehru he's moving we have written moving enough, to the center moving to the we have written a lot about in our work in fact I think we're one of the first to talk about the fact the centrist uh, being positioned is that the India doesn't it doesn't Indian system does not make for extremist parties left or right okay. to win elections and there is always a very powerful thrust towards centrism Fair and enough. Mr. Ba Mr. Modi's behavior and let and his speeches show that he's moving towards as fast as he can okay. to the center endorsing a great deal of you know nationalist history which means congress history and so forth so and he's trying to emphasize that he's not a he's not an extremist with respect to muslims he's a great 
developer of okay, the state now, of Gujarat. Final question on that theme. If indeed Mr. Modi were to romp, well, uh, uh, make uh, you know a 220 or a 230 kind of seat, See. and he becomes a little more unchallenged as a leader, would you revise that theory that India always has a centrist as uh, uh, a prime minister? Just turn your question a little bit this differently. Why is why is Narendra Modi talking about Gandhi? Why is he talking even about Nehru? Why is he trying to be a middle? He's trying to be a centrist. He's trying to say I'm not an extremist. I'm not. He's trying to say that mm -hmm. you know people shouldn't think I'm against Muslims or, or something so like that. So what you're saying is that even if Mr. Modi uh, becomes the next prime minister, yes. chances are that he will move to the center. He is moving to the center. He has. He can't win this. He can't get a, a, a single p largest party, but. Without and he is moving. It's quite clear he's moving decidedly towards the center. And I'll say the second point is, of course, to make people forget that he has a Muslim problem. He's going to say, I, we, "Gujarat is, you know, most rapidly developing state, and I will improve the economy." So the economy is a question, not not uh, communal questions. And um, so and. So, so now you have 100, we wrote some time years ago, 122 seats in which you have 10 percent or 20% or 10 20, percent 20 uh, Muslim voters. And does he think, maybe he thinks he can make some of those voters not vote against him because that's a lot of seats not to be able to uh, win uh, the, the, the constituencies with uh, a, a substantial or 20 percent or less. Muslim voters. So, so I mean, the point is, he is moving to this. He has mo his whole campaign now is centrist. All right. Uh, I'll have to take my first break on that note. Uh, uh, a person who has got it right in the past is telling us uh, that uh, he would place his first bets on a BJP-led government, but maybe not with Modi as Prime Minister. And the second bet he would place is that if indeed Mr. Modi becomes Prime Minister, he would be way more centrist. Indeed, he thinks that he's already very centrist. We'll take a break on that note. We'll come back with more questions for two experts who know more about India than anyone else I know. Welcome back to The Appointment uh, in our election exchange series. My guests are two political science professors who have written about India for the last 55, 60 years and are quite clearly the most authoritative watchers of the Indian political scene. Well, uh, uh, Professor Rudolph, the, uh, uh, I, the point I want to discuss with you is the rise of the Aam Aadmi Party. Do you think it will become a force to reckon with after the elections? Yes, it certainly will. Uh, you know, Reckon with means uh, how many seats it's going to win, and that is again like so many things: how many Congress seats, is, how many seats Congress is going to lose, and how big a uh, how many seats BJP is going to gain. But Am uh is uh, is certainly an untested thing. They to run an election nationally. I mean, they surprise people in Delhi. Uh, and they, you know, they need organization, they need money, and all these things that parties have. And for the most part, they are. But there's a new spirit, uh, different spirit, and um, but they can cert they certainly can be. Uh, I would say a big spoiler in this election. Mm -hmm. There's something new, but they are not being. Let's say they they get they they, they you know they get the same percentage of. Uh, seats nationally that they got in Delhi. Uh, that would be a huge... Uh, oh, that's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Yes. Well, they didn't get... They had, what is it? 30 yeah, percent? 27 percent. 27 percent. Yeah, well, I'm not saying they will get 27 percent, but they might get 15 percent. Uh, that would make a, a big difference in how you form a government and what... The, if the BJP is the single largest party. The question is, would the Am um, um, Admi they didn't want to ally with anybody, but they had to ally with Congress. Would the Am um, be ally with BJP? My view is unlikely. No, no, that looks uh, definitely uh, unlikely. Uh, not on the cards at all. Not on the cards.
Mm. So this would make a big... So, no, do you think this party has a chance of surviving? You know, non-BJP, non-Congress parties have been very, very marginal parties like the left. Mm. Uh, and one experiment of a non-BJP, non-Congress, uh, uh, non uh, you know, Janta party uh, didn't quite succeed, although, you know, the BJP was part of it. Do you think the Aam Admi party shows promise of surviving the next 10 years? I think it will survive. Uh, uh, it, it, it was, you know, sometimes these new parties survive one or two elections. It would depend of, of, about, in part, of how well they do, mm. and whether, and you know, whether they were uh, form. You know, the question is, how how deep does this anti-corruption thing go? Could governance go? The new, you know, there's a lot of analysis suggesting that the Indian electorate is younger and younger and younger and how much they will participate. They do participate pretty well and there's a lot of talk about um, the other thing and there's a lot of talk about the electorate being more urban than it used to be and less rural than it used to be. Now the Anadmi, there's a good question for them. They they're tend to be an urban party, mm -hmm. middle class, if you will, party. and. Um, uh, so that gives them a, a, a bit of a leg up, I think, for a little staying in, staying in the game a little, a little bit longer. You know, we've got uh, Narendra Modi, who, if he becomes, would be the first chief minister, successful chief minister for 10 years, who becomes prime minister. We've also had some good chief ministers uh, in Bihar, in Madhya Pradesh, uh, and maybe even in Tamil Nadu. Do you think this is a new trend that we are going to get uh, uh, very good uh, chief ministers who will then come into uh, uh, the prime minister's rule? Is there a new trend you see? Well, there's something to be said that that's the kind of thing that's happening. Uh, partly because if you look at the Congress, is totally hung up on dynastic politics and the, the fact that they or seem to be the dynasty, the dynasty seems to be petering out. I don't want to say anything further than that. And, and the BJP cannot, uh, you know, the wise Narendra Modi there, because the, out of the parliamentary party, which has been the source of prime ministers of most parties for, since the beginning, nobody can step forward anymore. So this is uh, this is an act of I wouldn't say. <laughs> quiet desperation, but I mean mm. he's a strong candidate. Mm. But um, uh, it is a re it is a remark on what's happening to parliamentary parties, mm -hmm. and that means that we're I think uh, Modi, as you're quite <clears throat> right in saying, uh, is the first um, uh, prime ministerial. I mean we don't officially have prime ministerial candidates, but he is mm -hmm. a prime ministerial candidate. You stand for a parliamentary constituency so you know so uh, after Nehru died we had Lal Bahadur Shastri and then we had uh, Indira Gandhi and so forth but neither of those was a uh, from a from a state very hard uh, in a way you could say that Modi is there because the BJP was incapable of getting any agreement within their parliamentary party mm -hmm. and who could lead yes Okay, let me come to another point. A state which you all have studied very closely, the state of Tamil Nadu, yes. uh, has a tendency to vote either the AIDMK in full or vote the DMK. It, it is always one of the other parties which gets about 80% uh, uh, of the seats, not votes, but 80% yes. of the seats. Yeah. Do you think that trend might change now because we understand uh, the Vanniyars, the caste that you have studied very well, uh, are going to vote and block because of uh, a, a Dalit issue? Is it possible that uh, uh, Tamil Nadu will not vote in such a swing manner this election? Well, that's a hard. Tamil Nadu these days is very because it's not only the Vanniyars, but there, you know, there is the uh, there's the Dalit party yes. and there's the Vanniyar party. And and they're, they, you know, they it's uh, and, and the, but then they have the DMK and uh, DMK mm. rivalry has tended to dominate and uh, and then there you know, there are smaller parties besides the ones I just mentioned and you just mentioned I I you know I've been reading a little but I mean the analysis out of Tamil Nadu is 
Very murky, I would say. Okay. Very murky. But you're quite right. The, the swings of DA, DMK, AI, DMK have been the previous patterns. So social scientists tend to say, well, how to predict the future? Take a trend out of the past. And that's what we're talking about today. DA, DMK, AI, DMK swings. And uh, we may see the end of that. Okay. And we may see more. Uh, uh, well, I, mean, I can't imagine what it, you know what it's going to look like exactly. Okay. Well, uh, uh, finally, uh, do you think uh, the Indian state will uh, uh, re-emerge from this uh, long period of inaction? Last five years, we haven't seen uh, the central government being able to do much. Uh, do you see an end to that and some action starting at all? I don't think it's going to happen. If the BJP uh, has a majority. Uh, uh, in the parliament and Modi becomes uh, prime minister it will certainly make a big difference for the Indian state he will be able to act and the state will look uh, much more effective and dynamic and so forth uh, but you know I think the chances of that happening so the answer to what's happened so the Indian state has been in decline since <laughs> I re keep repeating this since <laughs> since the 10th general election in 1989 when you had majorities congress majorities except for Janta period even there there was a ma yeah, clear but, majority but so never the, the 90s uh, at least 90 to 94 we saw a lot of policies being uh, changed and the state was reasonably effective likewise even in 2004 and 2009 we saw a lot of uh, you know uh, the golden quadrangle being built uh, uh, but in the last five years have been uh, periods when other institutions have dominated rather than the executive will, yeah, well, that, will that, that change that's all true it's all true but it's still uh, for the state to be effective in this parliamentary system you need a majority in Parliament yes. and if you even if you have a coalition you have a coalition you have to have a coalition that can work together so the decline of the Indian state is to a large extent a decline in the capacity to have effective majorities in the up to 89 you had a with mm. Jonathan but Congress majorities uh, for 10 elections or nine elections and one yes. Jonathan and since then it's you you don't have as much you don't have really majority a coherent effective majority so the answer is it's unlikely I mean you know Modi may pull it off but if he doesn't pull it off no I don't see any improvement okay. all right uh, on that note yes. thank you Professor Susan and Lloyd Rudolph for joining me today on the appointment uh, uh, that's an important and unbiased view of India and we have to take it on board that it at the moment looks like the decline of the Indian state is not going to be reversed anytime soon.